In Acts 1711 we read, These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. So without further ado, let's look into God's Word, the Bible. Good morning and welcome to Searching the Scriptures. This is devotional number 540, and today's date is February 8th, 2019. This week, our topic has been the nature of division. And in particular, we have been examining the division that is taking place in our world today within the kingdom of Satan, which was vanquished by the Lord Jesus Christ on May 21, 2011 as Christ is now ruling this world with a rod of iron, according to Revelation 19.15. Jesus' statement in Mark 3, 24-26 is being fulfilled right before our very eyes. I'll read the surrounding context, starting with verse 22. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He hath Beelzebub, and by the prince of the devils casteth he out devils. And he called them unto him, and said unto them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand, but ha <clears throat> excuse me, but <clears throat> pardon me, but half an end. As I stated in devotional number 539, we're going to discuss the following terms today in order to expand our understanding of the division that is taking place in our world today. Half an end in Mark 3:26 is brought to desolation in Matthew 12, 25, and falleth in Luke eleven seventeen. The first set of words, hath and an end, hath is 2192, and end is 5056. This occurs in Mark 3, 26, which I'll read again. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand, but hath an end. These two terms also surface in four other citations in which the end of whatever subject is prominently in view. First, in Luke 22:37, we discover this declaration regarding the Lord Jesus himself. For I say unto you that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors. For the things concerning me have an end. Those are our two words, have an end. Secondly, if we go to Romans 6, 21 to 22, we find that what is being presented here are two opposing destinations. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Thirdly, in Hebrews 7.3, we find this amazing pronouncement concerning the high priest and king Melchizedek, who is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ, without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. The next expression is brought to desolation, which is Strong's number, it's one word, uh, Strong's number 2049. And it appears in Matthew 12, 25. 
And by the way, I want to make a correction because uh, in our last devotional, number 539, I mistakenly said Matthew 11:25. It should be Matthew 12:25. So I want to correct that. This term, 2049, is employed in the following passages uh, besides Mark 12:25, which I'll read again. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. We find something similar, a similar statement, in Luke eleven seventeen. But he, knowing their thoughts, speaking about Christ, said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and a house divided against a house falleth. Likewise, uh, Revelation 17, 16 acknowledges, And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Revelation 18, 17, and 19 translates this word as come to naught and is she made desolate, referring to Babylon again, which is the kingdom of Satan. For in one hour so great riches is come to naught. And every shipmaster, and all the company in ships and sailors, and as many as trade by sea, stood afar off. And they cast dust on their heads, and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea, by reason of her costliness. For in one hour is she made desolate. The last expression that we want to investigate is falleth. And again, it's found in Luke 17, as we just noted. And uh, I'll read it again. But he, knowing their thoughts, said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And a house divided against a house falleth. Again, this word is uh, 4098, uh, and it occurs over 90 times in the New Testament, and primarily as the term fall, according to these next uh, citations. Earlier this week, we took note of Matthew 7, 24 to 27, uh, in which this term, it fell, uh, crops up in verse 25 and 27, outline the two opposing kingdoms that are in view, the kingdom of God versus the kingdom of Satan. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. Two other references speak of the fall of Babylon or the kingdom of Satan. Uh, Revelation 14, 8 and 18, 2 respectively, in which this word is fallen is repeated in both of these scriptures. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, 
and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every clean, unclean and hateful bird. This week, we have seen why and how this world has become so divided due to God's judgment upon it. We should not be surprised by the things that we see all around us in society or to naively presume that these things will ameliorate. They won't, but will only grow worse and farther away from truth. However, for the genuine child of God, there is indeed great hope and expectation for an exceedingly bright future in the new heavens and new earth. In the meantime, let us remind one another of the task of fulfilling this new commission of feeding sheep in light of what 1 Corinthians 15, 58 exhorts. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord.